If you're a drummer playing with other musicians, chances are you've had the chance to learn a song or two. Or maybe you're just starting out on the drums and you have no intentions of playing in a band or with other musicians anytime soon. Even so, you're probably working on learning a favorite song. Regardless of which camp you're in, having a reliable method you can follow for learning songs as quickly and easily as possible can save you a ton of time when a gig or a playing opportunity suddenly comes up. Today I'm gonna to show you my method for writing what I call a cheat sheet chart which is really just a simplified drum chart containing reminders for how the song goes. You'll watch this in real time as I listen through the song a couple times to make sure I get all the important details down. I'll finish by giving you my number one tip for writing your own quick, simple, and thorough drum chart. So I just finished editing the video and got it uploaded to YouTube. Everything was all good. And I discovered that the song Come Together by the Beatles is blocked in all countries. That's no good because that means that you won't get to watch the video. So I've got to go through and redo some things. I don't have time to completely reshoot it with a different song because that involves redoing a lot of little portions of the video. I'm gonna have to go back and rework some things and take out the audio, unfortunately, which I hate it because it kind of destroys the real-time aspect of this because my plan was to have you actually watch me write it as you're listening to the song, as I'm listening to the song, because I had all the audio in there all nicely. It was gonna be great. Uh, but it is what it is, so now I'm gonna speed up the portions of me writing because it's gonna be super boring without being able to listen to the recording. So it'll probably be four times speed. Whatever it ends up being, I'll put it on the screen there so, just so that you know. I'm not gonna leave out anything. All the footage will still be there. You'll see me doing every part of this chart. It's just gonna be condensed into a shorter amount of time without the audio. So I hope you still enjoy the video. We'll make the most of it. Okay, first off, if you watch that all the way through, big props to you because you are patient and ambitious and you're actually trying to improve your chart writing game. And I'm glad that you watched through the way that I write mine. 
even if you're not gonna do the same thing. Just being able to maybe pick up on some different things I did might help you out. That's how I've developed my method by seeing how other drummers write their charts and making adjustments based on what I like and what works for me. So thanks for sticking through that. So just to explain a couple things, um, yes, this was a song that I'd already heard before and I already knew, but I wanted to pick a song that I knew that you guys would know too, and that's a fairly simple song that's easy to follow and easy just for this illustration. Yes, most of the time when I'm writing charts, I'm doing them for a song that I've never actually heard before, and so really the only difference there is that I might listen to it once and then start writing the chart. But for the most part, I'm not playing complex fusion stuff. It's all pretty simple songs, and so this method works great. There in that first pass, I was just writing down the number of measures. The whole song's in 4-4, I'm just counting bars, you know, uh, like an eight bar verse, two bar chorus, uh, four bar um, little riff turn thing um, with the drum groove, all those kinds of things, just getting that roadmap down. We'll circle back to this point because it's very important. In that second pass, I added in other little details, like right here we have a quick break, like at the end of the chorus, the chorus is just that two bar thing, and on beat three of that second bar, we're out, three, four, and then back in with the drum groove. I also wrote in little things like fill here, any little important pieces to the puzzle, anything that there's a chance I might forget. And then I looked back through the chart and added in my color coding system. I've just got different colors that I'll see for each instrument each part of the kit. For instance, if it's a tom groove, I'll label that in blue. Uh, if it's a ride thing, I'll label it green. Closed hats, yellow. Open hats, orange. Crash, red. Um, I think that's everything. So you could kind of come up with your own system too, based on whatever colors you like. Or you might think I'm crazy and you don't want to do that. But I really like doing it because it makes it easy to just see at a glance. Orange, open hats. Uh, green, ride. I immediately know which instrument on the kit to go to for timekeeping. And a lot of times playing a lot of pop and rock stuff, that's great because you might be going back and forth between open hats here and ride here and then going to the crash here. And that might be the hardest thing to remember because you might think about this and plan it ahead of time but then forget in the heat of the moment on the gig. And you're trying to look at your chart and see what you wrote. Having the color coding system just makes it easier. So I mentioned that the math part of the chart that I first did is the most important. Well, that's my number one tip. Make sure that whatever chart writing method you're using, you're getting that math portion down, the basic roadmap of the song. Here's why. You as a drummer can probably fake your way through a basic groove or some basic fills, any kind of part in a pop song or a basic rock song, but you can't necessarily fake your way through a five bar chorus or a two and a half bar turn or a six bar verse or something weird like that, or maybe there's an extra little tag that adds on a half measure to a chorus. Weird things like that are the things that you're most likely to mess up and get tripped up on if you didn't actually write them down to begin with. Now with the song like Come Together and most pop songs that we're learning, it stays in 4-4, so we're not having to think too much about how many beats there are, we're just counting measures. But knowing how many measures are in each section just makes it that much easier to glance at something and say, ah, eight bar section, four bar section, two bar section, or eight bars and then put a little one after that. Oh, there's that extra measure after the chorus. I need to remember to hang on there before I come back in on the groove in the next verse. It's super important that you have those details down. There are times when I'll get called for a gig last minute and I'll have like two or three hours to prepare for it. And there could be five, eight, 10 songs to learn. And so when I'm having to learn a bunch of songs like that, this is the method I go to. And if I'm really short on time, I might literally just be writing down the, that math portion, the most important part of the chart. And then maybe writing in quick notes on, okay, we're down here, grooves in here. And I'm not even able to write in details of what the groove is because like I said a second ago, if I have to, I can fake my way through the groove and it's gonna sound fine, but I can't fake my way through a seven and a half bar verse where we jump into the chorus two beats early. And so having all of that down is essential. So whatever chart writing cheat sheet method you use, whether or not you adapt mine or you've got your own totally different one, just make sure that you're accounting for all the measures, all the bars so that your roadmap is solid because that will save your life in the heat of the moment. Thanks guys so much for watching and subscribers. Thanks for being fellow non-glamorous drummers and members of this community here on YouTube. And if you're new to the channel, I hope this video helped you out. I hope a lot of my other non-glamorous drum videos help you out and I hope to earn your subscription. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great weekend. I will see you next week. I immediately know what to go to.